Hello everybody, today's video we're going to show you how to use a Brannock device to properly fit your shoes. And today I've got Brian Pearson who is? A store manager at Allen Edmonds and I have fit over a thousand people during my career. Okay, so let's go. Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of five. My shoe collection. These are made of shell cordon. Here they are finished up. I'm not a professional. Look how tight this is though. Very clearly here I just cut the thread in half. And here they are, all finished up. All right, everybody, this is a video I'm very excited to do. I've been setting this up for months, and actually this included uh, purchasing a genuine Brannock device. I purchased this off of a Facebook Marketplace. I think it was like $30 or something like that. So in case you don't know, you want to talk about the history, the brief history of the Brannock device, and then we'll get into some of the details of fitting. The goal of this video is to help you guys make sure you know your actual shoe size. And by the way, I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to bet most of you don't really know your proper Brannock device shoe size. Is that a fair statement? That is a fair statement. So Otis Brannock was from Syracuse, New York and a graduate of Syracuse University. In 1927, he patented the Brannock device and formed a company under the same name, the Brannock Company. We use this as a standard of measurement throughout the shoe industry. And to give you an idea, before the brand device came about, it was all over the place as far as sizing. And once a brand device was patented, it became a 95 to 96 percentile in accurate sizing. Now, one thing that you need to know is a size one, a men's size one is seven and two thirds inch. That is where you start. And then you go from there, a full size is a third of an inch, or yes, a third of an inch, and then a half size of six of an inch. That's, a bar With, that's actually a barley corn, isn't it, right? I might system, be. I think it's called it the barley be. corn. And then your width, you add three sixteenths of an inch for every width, you go wider or more narrow. U.S. system. Correct. Okay. okay. And this, this model right here, just so you know, this is a men's one. They do make a women's as well and they do make a unisex as well that has them on both sides. And remember that women's medium is a B width, whereas men's medium width is a D width. D is in delta, yep, okay. E would be wider, double E, triple E, right? Correct. So from D, C, B, A, and Alan Edmonds goes down to what, like triple A or Triple something? A, triple okay. A to triple E. Okay, awesome. So Brian, in, in your estimation, what percentage of men that walk into your, shoe, your, your store um, never having purchased Allen Edmonds, actually know their real shoe size and width accurately. So most of the time it is about 10 to 20% will know their size. Uh, one thing that is very common is most people have not been put on a brand device and you should be put on the brand device about once every two to three years. Uh, your, really? your weight fluctuates. Mm -hmm. If your job changes, that will change how your foot is. So a pharmacist, for instance, who's on their feet for 10, 12 hours in a day, they can actually gain a width to a half. And in one case, I had a gentleman that was a full size at the end of the day. So we would have to accommodate his shoes from the morning to the evening. So we accommodated them that way. So he would actually grow into the shoe as the day went on. From like a D to an A E, for example. Uh, so this right. gentleman actually went from a uh, nine to a 10. And so we oh, actually wow. went up to a 10 D in his shoe because his foot swelled that much throughout the day. That's insane. And wow. now that's something also when you are doing your sizing is knowing what kind of profession you're in. If you do travel overseas a lot, your feet swell while you're in an airplane. And if you go overseas quite often that way, you will find that when you get over there, if you took your shoes off, you have a hard time getting your shoes back on because your feet have swollen. Wow. And it takes two to three days for your feet to come back to the normal wow. sizing. So a size accordingly as well for that, do not fit tight shoes if you're traveling that often. I've also uh, read online about some guy's style forum and uh, you know some of the, the, the groups I'm in, like Alan Edmonds Enthusiast Group, where as they age, they'll just hit a certain age or lose a lot of weight, drop a shoe size, get older, and their feet, I think, what, do they get wider when you get older? Uh, so they actually get longer. Uh, typically, okay. if you have an arch, your arch starts to fall. And that is the reason for this portion right here. So if you see, this is the arch length or heel to ball ratio. That's something that we actually measure all the time. And that will change over time. That will change again um, if you have any injuries, uh, if you have any uh, weight loss, you can lose like width or, and that's typically about, in a male, it's about 30 to 35 pounds. Uh, you will see a significant change in the foot. So it might go from 11 to 11 and a half, 
or you might go from an 11E to an 11D and you'll notice your shoes fitting larger um, and then you would have to adjust accordingly. Okay, okay, wow, great. All right, Bob, now go ahead and take off both of your shoes. Okay. You should always be careful to pull them off. Don't use the other shoe on your heel. To, to, don't, don't do that, right? Correct. Okay. That's all you'll separate the top. Go ahead and set those underneath here. Okay. And now what I need you to do is go ahead and stand. Okay. And we're going to put the brand device right here. Right. And go ahead and put your right foot on first. There is a right and a left on the brand. There is. And what you'll notice is the numbering system right here. So this is why you should be doing this as a two person if you can. And what this is, again, we went over, this is 11, this is a 12. So there is a third of an inch between these two, six of an inch between the 11 and 11 and a half. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take toe length right here. And if you are on your own, what you can do is you can take your finger and kind of feel around for the line so you know where you're supposed to be. Okay. Now, next thing we wanna do is we wanna move the arch bar up here. And the arch bar needs to be right in line with the ball, the metatarsal area. And so what this should do is this should feel like it's cradling the inside of your foot. This is where the natural flex point of your foot is. Now what we do is we take the width. Now the width is not as big of a issue when we're doing this because we also want to take into account how fleshy the foot is, muscular, bony, instep, uh, anything of that nature, that's where you want to see. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to put that right up there. And now, In other words, I think what I learned from you today already is that that's measuring an absolute width, but the shoe width, the foot width is not a length, you know, it's not a distance, it's a circumference, it's a, right? Correct. We're trying to estimate a volume from taking a linear measurement. Correct. So again, I'm going to take and put it right there. And it feels perfect. Yeah. All right. So now if we look over top, we're going to look straight down. We'll see your toe is just over the 11 mark right there. However, we're gonna take into account this arch length. This is where our good starting point is gonna come from. And you'll notice that's a 12 and a half. And that 12 and a half right there is a very key thing. Now, number one, if you are buying any running shoes, this is where you need to be is up here, not here. A lot of times you think your toe length is where your running shoe should be, but this is where your natural flex point of a running shoe should be. So if you're buying running shoes, I would want you to be in a 12, 12 and a half, and possibly even a 13. And again, this is where the width will come in. So on the width side right here, we notice, now I wanna take the 12 and a half measurement. Now 12 and a half measurement now, let says- the camera reset. All right, so now if you notice, you'll see, if we took the 12 and a half, cause that's what we wanna go with, you'll see that it's right between the C and the D. Now we always, especially with how fleshy your foot is, we would wanna go up higher. Now, if we just went on the 11, or we'll say 11 and a half even, you'll notice that you're all the way over from a D to the E. And what that does also tell us is that if we were gonna do an 11, 11 and a half, we'd wanna be at least in an E. And again, knowing how much volume there is on your instep and the toe box area, I would say you'd wanna be an 11 and a half triple E. Now, however, if you did find a really good deal on a pair of shoes, and you wanted to go up to the 12, uh, you could go up to like a 12D or 12E, and it would not make a difference on the fit. Um, it will just be a little tighter in the heel, and if the toe box, if the last is wider, you could probably do a 12E. Um, now just remember, 11 and a half triple E and 13D are very comparable in size, mm -hmm. and so if, again, you found a 13D with like a nice, good size toe box, a 13D would also work because your flex point of your foot is telling me that's where you want to be. Now let's take the left foot. Okay, and that's interesting you say that because I have two, at least two, maybe three pairs of 13Ds that I wear comfortably. All right, so now, again, we notice that his foot is back here. It's gonna set. Okay. All right, now we want to press down on the toes. Make sure the toes, if somebody has a hammer toe, typically that would be in the second or third toe, we'd want to make sure those are pressed down so we can get the actual length. Hammer toes, you said when it curls up? So that's what would happen is your toe would go like this and the second joint will end up with a callus. And that's typically from wearing too small of shoes. We don't see it as much anymore. Uh, that was very prevalent for the time when we were 
looking at uh, the Great Depression and, and people who would not be able to afford the shoes and so they would try to make shoes last a lot longer. All right, so what we get, we're gonna take this bunion area right here, this ball of the foot, and we're gonna kind of set it right in there. All right, so now what you'll notice and you can actually see here, you can actually see he's got an arch right here. So now does the arch have anything to do with the inset? The answer is no. But what that does tell me is that you're gonna have a little bit more of an issue supinating where you're gonna actually supinate out. So you're gonna cup out. Now arch length on this one is 11 and a half. Oh, wow. Toe length is 11. You'll notice it's about a quarter of an inch difference. Uh, quarter meaning quarter from the uh, other one. And then so not much difference. And then again, we're gonna slide it slightly against the toe. And on this side, you'll, we'll see that it's actually wider. And we're gonna move the camera over there so that way we can see how much wider this foot is than the other foot. And so what you'll notice is right here, this Taylor's bunion, that's what some people call a corn or they'll, they'll say it's a corn, but it's a Taylor's bunion. So the Taylor's bunion is on the outside of the foot. And if you have a wider foot, you wanna make sure that you're accommodating for that. Now, again, I wanna go from 11 and a half. So if I go 11 and a half, I'll look right here and I'll notice you're already in an E. If I go with the 11, I'll notice you're definitely in the E and verging over to where the double E marker is. And you'll notice even on here, it says firmly for a thin foot, lightly for a wide foot. And again, wider foot, you're gonna have more likelihood for a Taylor's bunion, things of that nature. A thin bony foot, we're gonna press very hard. When I say very hard, it's gonna be like this, where I'd press up against it. So that way we can get more of that narrowness fit and we can accommodate for the narrow heel and the narrow foot all the way around. Now, by the way, what I found, uh, Brian, is that I always have fitment problems in the right foot, never the left. And that would be because the arch on this one is shorter, uh -huh. the toes are slightly shorter, but this is the wider foot. So when we do this, we wanna make sure that we're taking the widest point, uh -huh. which was at least an E. So we know that we were at least an E and Again, that's just a starting point. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna take the longest foot, which was the right foot. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because we wanna make sure the flex point is going to be accurate on the bigger foot. Wow. All right, now let's take another foot here for an example. And go ahead and put your left foot in. All right, now what you wanna do is you wanna put your foot up here though, so that way you're balanced. You want to be balanced on your weight. What he was showing was the other foot, right? Because he had his other foot back. Correct. Mm -hmm. And so now, again, we're going to take the ball, which is right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask him to put his foot right up against here. So that way we know that it's right in that cup. And we're going to press slightly again. Higher instep right here. Now now you'll notice, you know he has a higher instep. Mm -hmm. Just from looking at it? Just from right? looking. So you can see... You can see right here just how thick this portion of the foot is right uh -huh. here. Okay. And you'll notice that his toe box is not quite as wide. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's that's something we will take into account. Toe length, if I'm looking right over top, again, we're gonna look right here and we're gonna say, okay, 11 and a half, but he's right over the 11 and a half, so I'm gonna verge up to the 12. Okay. Now, let me move the camera. See, just for the illustration, the camera's behind his foot. Mm -hmm. But if I move it up here to more of your point of view over top, Correct, you'll see that the big toe. Now you notice his second toe is bigger, or our first toe is big. The big toe is the longest, so then we know that's the longest point we have to go. So would you call his length a 12 or 11 and a half? We 12. would call it a 12. 12. Yeah, so now you notice the rest of his foot. Now here's something caveat. So you notice how big the big toe is right here? Yeah. But look at the second and third toes as we go back, we're almost a full size difference between them. Wow. All right, so what's that? what that is gonna tell you is, he's gonna find that the toe box is kind of big no matter where we go. However, we still need to fit for this toe because if we go too short here, the big toe will start curving in and will create a bunion. Mm -hmm. Now, over here we have, this is where his ball of his foot is, is right here, we can feel this, and there's a 12. So his arch length and his toe length are actually similar. Right there, width, we go over here. Now again, 12D is where we have him measured out at. Now, I've not seen any of his shoes or anything like that, so I wouldn't know how we, and we always ask, you know, how do you like your shoes? Loose, tight, what, what the caveat would be. But I would tell you a ball moral is gonna fit tighter across here than it would be on a uh, person with a shorter uh, instep on there. Now, one thing you also notice too is you notice the foot kind of curves, so it kind of curves out this way. 
So we do know that he's going to supinate a little bit. Uh, but I notice the ankle's straight up. So again, we're gonna have to accommodate for that. That's where some of the width is coming because he's kind of, we call it a little bit of like a boomerang foot. Oh, but wow. that's, uh, so if you actually notice, that's something that uh, each foot's a little different. Mm -hmm. All right, now we're gonna do the right foot. Okay. So, but you said there is also some preference in this, whether people like a tighter fitting fit or- Correct. So now let's take this foot into account. So again, we're gonna hit right here. So again, the ball of the foot's right here. So you notice his toes are much longer. This big toe's much longer. And that's where, that's where fitment will also be different. So now let's take this and again, I'm gonna press right here. So we go over here, big toe again, 12, every other toe back to the 11. So full size difference between those. Arch length is now longer. 13 on the right side. Now I'm gonna press over here. And is that part of the why 13s typically seem to fit him better is because he's got the longer arch length? Uh, so that does actually play into a factor is the right foot, not the left foot. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that will play into a factor too is the width of the shoe. So if, again, if we go 13, we're gonna go D. If we go 12, you'll notice the 12 is verging. So again, I don't wanna to be too tight against it, but you notice that the 12 right here mm -hmm. is on this high side of the D verging over to an E. Mm. Okay, so what that tells me is if we were to go to more of an E, we would be able to accommodate a little bit better there. But again, I wanna stress the arch length is where your starting point should be, not the toe length. Arch length is where we wanna be at. So even though the toes measure out the same, the arch length on this foot was a 12, arch length on this foot was a 13. So I gotta go for the longer, the wider, and I would say we would start with a 13D, but we may go down to a 12E. Wow, wow, awesome. Um, you wanna talk a little bit about uh, a foot anatomy for a few minutes, not going way down the rabbit hole, but I mean, just for example, it took me a long time to figure out you know, you read things online sometimes and it makes sense, but you're not sure if you really know, like this is the instep, you know, arch. You want to talk about some of those things, pronation, you know, just briefly? Yeah, so one thing that you're going to notice real quickly is people with a higher, in, like a higher instep, that doesn't naturally, so if you think of an instep, it's like this. And Would this help? This is a shoe tree, obviously, yeah. but if we pretend this is a foot. So right? if, you, if you consider this your instep right here, you'll notice that's pretty high. Okay, now that does not have anything to do with your arch. A lot of people consider that part of their arch. It's not part of the arch. So what you'll notice though is you can, we'll just use my hand. Uh, so we'll actually do this right here. So this is what, if you kind of go like this, this is kind of normal, maybe a little bit here. So if you have a Balmoral shoe, Balmoral means it's closed at the bottom. So if you take an Allen Edmonds Park Avenue, for instance, that's a Balmoral shoe. And what that will do is that'll put extra pressure up here where the fleshy part is. Now, if you have, less of an instep and you notice it's more flat like that you won't have as much pressure from a ball moral and we can size accordingly for that now if you have a high arch so let's say you have a high arch and you go like this you supinate so that means that you're rolling to the outside mm -hmm. bull-legged also can be that way and then what you have is if you're flat-footed, you'll notice a lot of people tend to pronate. It's a very common thing. And by and the way, not to interrupt, the way I was kind of, somebody taught me to remember it, supinate, your hand is like a cup, like a soup, bowl of soup. Yep. And then obviously, obviously uh, other is pronation. So that's yep. a function of a higher low arch? That is pronation correct. And supination? Yep, okay. so you'll, you'll notice very common lower arches or fallen arches, pronation in, which then ends up putting extra pressure on the inside of the knee into the lower back. Um, so again, if your shoes are getting worn out um, and, your pro, and your pronator, typically uh, it's before you even realize that you're gonna have, start having some pain in the inside of the knee and then you'll start feeling it in your lower back. Can you tell by looking at wear patterns which one people are? So in some cases we can. So if you take, uh, so typically you're gonna be right across the ball here. That would be one way to know that you're flexing very well and you're getting a good pressure point. So if you supinate, Typically, you're rolling on the outside, so we'll see more pressure along the outside. If you pronate, you'll have a little bit more pressure on the inside. Now, some people can accommodate how they walk, depending on the muscles in their ankles. And so that's why we don't always go by that, but we can go okay. with that and see. 
especially when somebody comes in for a recraft, we'll know exactly what they're doing to their shoe. So do either of these tell you anything about me? Yeah. So if you look here, you notice how I actually, you put more pressure on the outside here mm -hmm. than the inside. Now, what I do notice though, is you also put a lot of pressure on the metatarsal, on the big, big toe. And you can see that right there. Um, and then when you're walking through, if you actually look up here, you'll see you have a, a very f fine toe pattern. So that means that these actually fit you in the right length. Now, if you find like the toe is very worn out, either A, you are rubbing it too much, or B, it is that the shoe may be too long or too short for you. And that's why you're putting more pressure up too on the toe. Too short a shoe can mm -hmm. wear the toe. That's correct. Really? Um, okay, so what it is, because your toes are too much, and so you're putting too much pressure on the toe, um, and that comes into the bend. So that's again where the arch link comes in. So when a shoe naturally flexes, you want that flex to come over the metatarsal, over the ball of the foot. Okay. And if you are not doing that, then what you'll end up finding is like, a lot of people think that their toes need to be all the way to the end of a shoe. And that, that is incorrect actually. And a lot of people also do the thumb thing. The thumb thing is kind of okay, but not really. Um, it doesn't actually measure where your foot is in the shoe and where the flex point happens because you should have a little bit of space up here so that way the air can flow through so your feet number one don't over uh, perspirate and then you also do not have the flexation uh, issue where you can end up doing some damage to your big toe or even uh, Taylor's bunch. Okay and if we look at this pair here it's not easy to see it uh, but I can see the tread pattern is the most worn right here on the outside, I guess, right? So that kind of follows the same thing. Correct, yeah, you, you put more pressure the, there, and then you also look at your, metatar the, your big toe area, you'll notice that you uh -huh. are okay. putting pressure there. But not bad, right? I mean, that's, no. okay. Nope, right. that's okay. normal. It's, yeah. it, what What else do we want to know? So let's so take I was a, say, so the fit of these then isn't horrible, or no. it's pretty much on. No, okay. and so the other thing is, take a look at the top of your shoe. Okay. So what you want to see is you'll see your creasing right here. So you'll notice you have a little bit right here, you have a little bit right there, and this is a little bit on the wider side for you. And so what that does is that's why you're getting this little extra crease right here and there. And you also notice you're not putting extra pressure up here. So you, we know that you don't have a super high instep because on a blucher like this, if you have a high instep, you'll see an extra crease right over here where you're putting pressure. And therefore you also wanna check on the inside here this make sure when you flex so when the shoe actually flexes like so that we are not putting extra pressure on the ball of the foot um if what will happen is if you come down on top of the top of your foot you can create a bunion you can create a callus Hang where on, you're reaching with that leather. leather folding correct because there's too much space too much that, leather okay so here's another yep. one i think these fit the 65 last on the allen edmonds uh, um 65 last i think is just a perfect fit mm -hmm. you know i call them a 10,000 step shoe so and so again, here, we're gonna take this, and we're gonna see where your arch rut. So you see, I kind of go over a little bit, where you, you kind of come over a little bit of pronation there. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why you're getting that little bit of extra arch area right here, that flexation right there, that crease. Wow. And then from here, you'll notice you're straight across. So- That's good, right? That, and that's how it should be. Mm -hmm. and, and behind the cap, you don't wanna have the, right? Correct, well, now the get, cap- you get creasing on the toe cap, what yeah, so generally? typically if you're getting too, if you're getting any creasing on here, it could be too short, too long. Um, now the other thing is that each cap is going to be a little different. Now this model, the way it's set up, is everything's going to be behind it. If you have something, we used to make a shoe called the Soho, for instance, that was a higher cap. Now you would flex in front of the cap because of where the cap was at. So don't always, if you're using a, a Park Avenue, for instance, yes, you can use the cap as a good message as a good way however if you're using something like a soho or a manhattan or something of that nature uh, from back in the day where you had that don't use it as much okay. because it will be a little bit different okay what can you say uh, about heel fitment then we talked a lot about the ball and the toe area what can you say about the heel fit so heel is going to be something where we always in the u.s we use two sizes smaller so if you have, for instance, this is a triple issue, and I think it is. Yep. So, yep, triple. And so this is a triple issue. So on the back, we're going to use an E. So if you go back in time and you see older shoes, you'll notice that they said triple E with a slash in between. That's Alden, what that Alden meant. still does that, right? But yes. they reverse it. Correct. So they, this one, Alden, would be an 11 and a half E, uh, 11 and a half E slash E E. Correct. 
correct. And, and each each brand has their own thing, but that's what that was. That's a combination lens. So everybody uses a combination lens. Now, if you were buying shoes from Europe, for instance, and they use, let's say, a D for a, a medium width, then they're gonna use an A heel. They use three sizes smaller. So if you buy any Italian shoes, Italians are always going to be three sizes smaller in the heel. And really? so that's so why if you have, correct. Hmm. And so that's why if you are, you know, having issues with a heel fitment, maybe you do try something from like Italy or something where it'll be more snug in the heel. Wow, I didn't know that, that's fascinating. Okay, um, what I have figured out is when you know one manufacturer that fits you well, and if they do popularize what last the shoe is made on. Correct. You know, I think that's golden. And what goes into a last as well, you gotta remember there's also toe spring, mm -hmm. which is here. So this is toe spring. This is where you're natural because when you first buy a shoe, you're not going to be able to be able just to flex the shoe right like it, it's it's never been flexed before. So that's what toe spring is. So it's it not a curve, walk. right? Correct. So that's why I'm showing is from the ball right here up. And that's gonna help you walk through. And then there's actually heel spring as well. So the heel spring also helps with the flexation of coming up over. And what happens is over time, this heel counter right here actually starts to come over your Achilles. And that's what actually gives you a tighter fit over time. And that's why when, when you come into like a store like mine, I will tell you that the shoe's gonna fit better in 80 hours than it does the first day. And there's a reason behind that. Now, Allen Edmonds uses cork bed. A lot of top manufacturers use cork bed as a insulator and then also as a custom fit for the insole. Now, what that also does is you gotta remember, that's going to mean everything's a flat arch. So if you have a high arch, technically you are not going to have that support right underneath that arch at first. Now it will, as your foot sinks in, it will form to that foot. And the same thing is with the metatarsal area. If you have calluses or anything, the cork actually forms around all that stuff. So it will become more comfortable as you wear it, but it will take 40 to 80 hours to get there. And that does also include, like if you have a single sole like this, or you have a double sole, like the McNeil here. I'm trying to show a little bit of the insole, if I can turn this light. Uh, no, you can't really see it very well, but you can definitely see a foot pattern. If you stick your hand in here, yes, you can feel imprint of my foot. When Correct. It it, it's an Correct. amazing thing. The outside portion of the shoe wears more frequently than the inside of the shoe. Okay. And what that ends up doing is it's just more of a wear pattern. So here, grab your shoe that you came in with here. And the question was, what is supination? Here, you can actually leave it off for a second. And so, really wore these. yeah, you haven't worn too much, but you can actually already see a little oh, bit right here. Wow. Yeah. So you see how that's wearing right there? So where the pressure point is, if you think about it, is back here. And again, it's on the outside portion of the shoe. And that means that you're just kind of rolling the outside, a little bit bow-legged, you know, the type of thing, it's normal. Um, but that's that's why you typically wear those shoes out. What we'll notice here is we talked about a zen step here, and what you'll notice is the pressure. So we don't have much pressure here, but as we move up the shoe, you'll notice there's a lot of pressure right up in here. And also, you can foot. tell part of that because the V is so wide, right? Correct. How wide that V is. Correct. Remember when you buy when you're buying the shoe, you do want to have a little bit more of a V in the shoe to start with because leather does stretch. So. If your laces go all the way together mm -hmm. at first, then the shoe's probably too big, too much leather on the top, and we'll actually see it when we go to flex. So go ahead and lace those up. So if you were trying to close that V up, is that an aesthetics issue or a fit, uh, you know, structural fit issue? You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, so some or people both. like to have it closed all the way when they first buy a shoe. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's or closed all, more at least. Well, and, and I actually have people that will buy it all the way closed, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. That has to do with their instep, and that also has to do with how they like the shoe. Okay. And that is a personal preference, but you, if you are buying a shoe that has the V to start with, you'll notice that having the wider V like this right here, as you wear it, as you continue to, to wear the shoe in and break it in, it will start closing up because leather does stretch. Mm -hmm. Okay. So but don't be afraid of the V. So if you wanted to try to tighten that up, how do you adjust the shoe size to tighten that up? So if we were to adjust the shoe size, what we'd do is we could go wide. So as you were talking about tighten this area up. Yes. We could go wider. That would be the first step. So if that was a 13D, go to 13E. Correct. Uh -huh. And by going up to a 13E, now one thing you'll also notice 
is if you look back here, you'll notice the throat line of the shoe. Mm -hmm. You'll notice he's got a little bit of gapping around there. Uh -huh. And now when he goes to stand up, now this is where the supination you'll actually see. Go ahead and stand up for me. All right, so now you notice we were talking about supination. Now he puts more pressure on the inside of the shoe, which is actually a little bit of pronation. However, you'll notice oh, that, that this yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. pushes out. Now that's can where a last can, of a shoe. Can you shoe. stick your finger in that? I don't think it shows up on camera, but there's a, yeah. Uh, or maybe you hold the shoe, hold the no. pants here yourself. You're good. Because your hand is blocking the view. So you can actually see. There's a see. gap right there. I can actually stick my pinky. There. Yeah. But now if you actually feel back here, mm -hmm. you'll notice his foot mm -hmm. is right there. It's pressing. Okay. It's pressing out. I'll be darned. And now what we do is we're going to look here. We're going to see. Now remember I told you about the bunion. So the bunion's right here. His metatarsal's right here. His big toe is gonna be about right there. Is that about right? Uh, yeah. Yep. And you'll notice that there is enough space in the toe so that the breathability is there. Mm -hmm. Now we'll go over to the right side here. And now wow. we could tighten up the throat line a little bit with the lace. We could tighten okay. this up a little bit because again, I can pull that. And you can see if I pull it, it does tighten that throat line up a little bit, but you can see that he does put a little bit more pressure there. Now, again, you'll see the rolling to the outside. You can actually see in the shoe, he's naturally rolling right here. I feel it too. And this is the bigger foot. So there's pressure right here on the outside of his foot mm -hmm. and little toe. And what you're that, feeling that because you're touching the leather and you feel foot oh, behind yeah. it. Oh yeah. yeah, you can actually, and you can actually see he's over top of the welt line. Oh, yeah. You can actually see over top of the welt line. Mm -hmm. And that's another key indicator right there that I would want to go to an E just, just to see how an E would feel on his foot. And again, bunion. Now you notice the bunion's a little more forward than it was on the other side. Because remember this one, arch length is a 13. Mm -hmm. And now the toe is going to be about the same spot though. So it's really right a there. compromise between the left and the right to get a perfect fit, isn't it? Uh, you have to go with the bigger. So it's, it's always about what foot is bigger with the arch length. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, we have to go with length and width that way. But width does play into a factor and the fleshiness of the foot does play into a factor. Supination, pronation plays into another factor. Mm -hmm. um, and then we get into the throat line where you mentioned on a pair of yours, you were getting a rub mm -hmm. on the ankle right here. Yes. And so that's where the throat line of a shoe can play into a factor. Uh -huh. Some shoes are gonna be cut a little lower. Uh -huh. Some may be cut a little higher. And if it's cut a little higher and it rubs your ankle and you love that style and you're married to it, then you're gonna have to figure out a way to make that ankle sit higher. But remember, you're gonna have to do it to both feet, not right. just one, or you're gonna throw your hips out of alignment. Right, right. Wow, it's awesome stuff. So, okay. say, that, so say that again, supination, you said you weren't aware of that until now, but you said. Well, as soon as you said it, I'm like, okay, yeah, I feel pressure on the outside of my feet usually. Like that feels like that's where the pressure is. Correct. If I'm like walking or running, that's where I start to get sore first, it feels like, but. Uh, what was yeah, so that's, that's very common. And so that's where like you'll start feeling like your little toe is getting pressure. Right. And if we go a little wider, maybe that would help with the toes not putting as much pressure on the outside. But the other thing, you know, you could even get into in some cases would be an orthotic to correct it. So something like a super foot orthotic that's over the counter, that will actually help so it doesn't allow the foot to supinate, which means you're also gonna put pressure on the outside of your knee. So if you do hmm. overextend yourself, you overexert your knees um, from supination, you also have more tendency to roll your ankle too. So by straightening it all up, you will not have a, that tendency to roll the ankle and put the strain on the ligaments of the knee. Now, uh, earlier you said I wasn't putting even pressure. On Correct. That. So you yeah. were not putting even pressure when you first put on the so we were on the left shoe. I noticed that's when you were rolling more to the inside, and as soon as you put pressure on that left foot, all of a sudden oh, then your out. ankle rolled to the out. Right, oh, because okay. you were. It's one of those things. If you're not paying attention to it, sometimes we don't put even pressure on our feet. Yeah, and and so that's where if you're putting even pressure and let's say you have an injury, you'll put more pressure on one side than the other. Mm -hmm. Or in some cases, you know, you just naturally lean towards one side. It's very common. And, and so there's no, no two people, like your right foot being a little bit bigger is not any, so I may measure somebody tomorrow mm -hmm. and their left foot will be bigger or their left foot 
you know, and they go, well, that was my, you know, plant foot from basketball or something. Well, the answer is that doesn't really play that much into a factor. Now, if you have a foot injury, that will play into a factor. But okay. for the most part, that is, uh, you have to deal with what you're given. And then that's why we use this as a measuring tool and a starting point. Because again, that's all this is, a starting point. It's not a cure-all end-all. Again, it's 95, that's, 96%. I say that's probably one of the biggest things I've learned today is I was, maybe the oversimplification, what I was thinking was, oh, learn to use a Brannock and then you can just order shoes online. And no, so there's a right reason, right. like you have a, you have, I thought that I knew a little bit about this stuff. And there's crap I never even thought of today. I mean, dozens of things today you've brought up. So, I mean, there's real value to me in seeing a, a, a actual master fitter, what you guys used to be called master fitter, right? Correct, a, correct. You know, at an Allen Edmonds physical <laughs> store. And I know, so, but at least if they can't get to a physical Allen Edmonds store or for whatever, like I, what I did, hey, sorry to say I cheated on you guys. I bought a pair of Cobbler Union shoes, mm -hmm. you know, but I'm, you know, the, the fitters there know what they're doing a little bit too. And correct. they don't have wide and narrow widths. So they're using size to accommodate width, you know, and last differences correct the one thing no. is though is if you do go into a store and they don't have a branding device go to a place that has a branding device right uh, because that is what shoe manufacturers uh -huh. are using as a standard okay. okay and so for sizing purposes now not all shoes are gonna be sized exactly correct I wish I could tell you they are that's the reason why they go to M W is because they have more variations because shoes are being made overseas for instance right. are gonna have to accommodate when they get them in okay now the one thing that you do want to do every again every two to three years stop into a store stop into a place and get refitted right again your job changes you lose weight you gain weight those things all just like you have to buy a new belt and working you might from have home, to buy a new shoe not wearing shoes can have your feet widen right? correct uh, so a lot of people found that working from home they're wearing slippers all the time and if you wear slippers all the time or let's say you go to the beach for a week and all of a sudden you get back and your shoes fit tight wow the issue with that is that your foot is a big muscle and it just starts to go around what you give it and then for that week wow. you didn't wear those dress shoes and all of a sudden you were wearing bare you're going barefoot you're wearing flip-flops on the beach now all of a sudden next thing you know is you are actually trying to get back in it'll take about a week but your foot wow. will go back into your shoe okay. and it will refit to your shoe however okay. you will notice at first it is a little snug. okay so i was hoping uh, i didn't finish this thought that people could watch this use a brannock and then order shoes online um like you just said a little bit ago, you have to deal with what you're given. Correct. That's going to be a huge challenge, but at least with this more of this knowledge, and if you guys watch this a couple few times, then it'll make more sense, and you'll be able to at least correct things that are fitment issues. Um, correct. In lieu of if you can't get to a store. With correct. A good and the fitment. online stuff, the online devices that are out there, the unfortunate thing is, is only measuring your length, your toe length. That's not measuring an arch. That's what I really want people to understand: is the arch length is the most important aspect of the branding device because that is where we always want to start at and go backwards from there if the toes are different. Now, right. let's say your toes measure out to a seven and your arch length is a six and a half. Well, at that point, we still want to go toe length because you don't want to go too short. But what you'll notice is the shoes, the flexation in a shoe. Mm -hmm. So let me grab a shoe here. Your foot naturally is gonna sit. So if you're just sitting, your foot will sit here. As you step, somebody who has a shorter arch length, their foot actually kind of retracts in a shoe. Most people, their arch length is longer. It's very rare I've ever seen where people are shorter in arch length and longer in toes. So most people, this goes for about 95%, their arch length will be longer. So what ends up happening is as you put pressure on your foot, the reason why they call a brand device so good is it's linear. So as you stand up, your foot goes longer and wider same thing in a shoe when you stand up your foot goes longer wider as you go to take a step your foot's going to slide if you don't take into account the arch length of your foot what will happen is your foot will slide right into the end of the shoe and when you go right into the end of the shoe what ends up then you end up cramping then you end up with toe issues and you can spend lots of money with doctors so the best thing is, is get the right fit to start with and the other thing is let's say you're a 12c so if you're a 12C, and most companies don't make Cs anymore, you'll find that, and let's say your arch length is a 13. Do we go to the 13B? We could. Or can we try 12D? Now that depends on the each person. Mm -hmm. 
most people are used to medium width shoes. So we don't try to change them that often. And therefore, if we are changing, you know, if we try to have 13B, at least we can try it on, see how it feels. Some people like how that feels because it's gonna fit your foot like a glove. Okay. How does like a uh, weight or over, being overweight, that kind of stuff affect like how your weight is distributed on your foot? Or so maybe like cause supination or something, I don't know. No, so typically uh, the weight factor it's just gonna displace, just like, you know, if you go into a body water, you're gonna displace more, right? So weight, what typically happens is your foot starts going wider. Okay. Um, but in some cases, if you have like a higher arch, what will end up happening is your arch will start falling because of the extra pressure mm -hmm. and your foot will lengthen. So mm -hmm. if you were to take off, like I said, 35 pounds, your foot may start coming back. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And so some people get length, some people get width, some people get both. It's, there's no, there's no, exact answer on that because everybody is a little different okay so if i want to keep 13 shoes i keep the weight on no i'm just kidding but yeah. uh, <laughs> the other question was um so i used to have like back issues a while mm -hmm. ago and i couldn't like step properly i think that might have been when i started shifting my weight out to the outside of my leg have you ever seen anything like that or would that yes. seem like something that would happen so what probably was is again think of everything as a line so you want to be up and down Right. So, do you remember the uh, was mandolin or not mandolin? Uh, the puppets. Yes, the puppets. Mm, but ma and, uh, what is that called? Marionette. Marionette. There we um, go. Marionette. French, actually, French. But I can think of them <laughs> because I my we used to go to Tucson. So, so the marionettes. A marionette is fully up and down with the strings, correct? Mm -hmm. So if you think about that, everything is in line, correct? When it's up and down, right. and then as they kind of drop the string, the body would the, that would show movement. So same thing with you is that if you think from the bottom up, you want to do that so everything's in line. So let's say we were to put an orthotic in there at the beginning of this, and we were to set you straight up so your knees are in line now, your hips are in line, and now your lower back is not going to have the issues because everything is straight up and down. Okay, wow. And, and so what ends up happening is you, by, by putting the pressure on, you know, let's say your knees start hurting a little bit because those ligaments, those joints start putting extra pressure because you're kind of rolling. Right. So you're rolling over there. So next thing you know is what are you gonna do? You're gonna start compensating with your body. That's what our bodies do. We just compensate. And these pop always, all my left hand specifically. Oh. Yep. And, and so here's something to think about. So let's say your left knee is hurting. Where do you put more pressure? On my right? Yeah. Oh, I know, I, I shifted my weight over. I had to retrain myself after I went to the chiropractor and got my back fixed to start trying to stand evenly again because I would walk like you know, and you're throwing I mean, your hip you're throwing your hips off too yeah right. and when you start I throwing your hips those. off yep so when you throw those hips off what ends up happening is that's where the lower back issue and well, that's why you don't want to go too long even like your running shoes for instance yeah. you wouldn't want to go too long because when they start wearing out internally remember externally on a running shoe does not wear out as quickly as the internal factor okay. that's why if you want to if you love those pair of shoes put an insole in I just did yeah. a week ago if you put new insole <laughs> in you'll get more life out of it but uh, that's the thing is the inside of a running shoe for instance wears out before the outside does okay and so you'll notice real quickly when your shoe starts losing the support factor you'll start noticing again knees and back mm -hmm. you'll start feeling that wow okay and as soon as you start feeling that you know that something's a little bit different okay and you'll you probably never noticed it but that is where you if you pay attention a little bit, you'll, and now, you'll see. Now I know, yeah. Yeah, and it's just little things like that that starts throwing everything else off, yeah. and then you end up spending, you know, thousand dollars for the chiropractor getting it fixed. Yeah. All right. So when I take a shoe, and I'll last, I want to see exactly. So I'm going to compare two right here. This one is an older floor shine right here, and long wing gumbo, and this one is a short wing, McAllister from Allen Edmonds. Now, if I'm looking at them you'll notice that this shoe, the Floor Shine, actually looks wider than the Allen Edmonds. So what does that mean in the last terms? Well, each last is gonna fit differently in the toe box, and that's where the toe spring, heel spring, everything like that goes into play. And by the way, last is the form on which a shoe is Correct. Made. Think of John Smith having multiple feet. And just because you like a shoe does not mean that that form, that John Smith's foot is going to fit well on your foot. Do not fall in love with a shoe until you put it on. If you do, you may have to find multiple sizes. I've had to do that where I wanted a certain shoe and so I have had went through, go through multiple sizes uh, and then to find the right size. 
So let's let's actually take this one right here. 11 and a half 2e is what's marked on the inside. This one right here, 11 and a half 3e. So what does that mean for sizing? That means you have to try it on. There is not going to be a perfect size between manufacturers, between ages. Uh, so if you have a shoe from 20 years ago, it may fit a little differently than in this model versus what it does today. And the reason behind it is styles change, pant legs change, hems on the pants change. And so what you have is you have things like this is called a flat back. So you'll notice this is low and it kind of comes like this. Then now a lot of things come with a higher crown. This is called the crown of a shoe, vamp, but we call it crown when we're making it and will come up higher. Reason is, is the hem lines have become higher. And so you show a sock and it comes up and it's a much neater look. And so that's why don't just stick saying it's gotta be one way or another. Always try it on and see how it feels. Along the lines of what you're just saying about lasts. So mm -hmm. here's my McAllister 11 and a half Triple E and here's the McNeil 11 and a half Triple E. I'll try and get them in the same focal plane. It looks larger because of the storm wealth, but another thing I've uh, noticed is the center of the toe. This is a 65 last, this is a 97, correct? correct? The center of the toe is more in line with the center of the laces, the center of the shoe, whereas on the 97 last, the toe is more towards, the center of the toe is not on the center of the shoe, so what that does to the 97, you see the, the center is kind of more this mm -hmm. way, the outside curves in more. Sweeping, it's called a sweeping Sweep, toe. Okay, versus when you, you see how it doesn't do that. So what I found for me is I actually should, to have a perfectly fitting 97 last, I think I need a 12 double E, where 11 and a half triple E fits ideally on the 65. Correct, correct. So if you were to pull the uh, McNeil back up, so this is, this right here is called the sweeping toe. Now you'll notice on some of the more modern lasts and things of like that, you'll see a much more sweep on the toe. That means, remember you have that Taylor's bunion on the outside of your foot. So therefore, this portion right here is going to hit nice and exactly hard right along there. Yep. And the other thing is, this portion right here then, you put more pressure on the inside, which means that your foot's gonna become more fatigued over time. If a shoe is too short, for instance, like in here, if your foot is becoming fatigued, it's because it's more than likely too short. And so you wouldn't wear these for that long, maybe two, three hours, and when you take them off, you'll notice you're gonna have some redness over here, redness over here, and you're not gonna to wanna to wear them the next day. That is a very common occurrence, and that is something to do with the shorter. And again, with your arch length, your toes run up here. And so you're running up to a shorter area than what this allows for. This right here, now you gotta to understand too, this is actually made about a half size longer mm -hmm. because it is more of a narrow fit all the way throughout. However, there's, that's the reason why we went a little longer, why Allen Evans goes a little longer on that. Mm -hmm. And that will change where the metatarsal, where the ball of the foot does hit. So it does hit at a wider point of the shoe. Now, when I was talking about, could you go up to a 13 on shoes? What you're doing is you're moving your foot back to a wider portion of the shoe. And by doing that, it's kind of like doing a wider shoe in general too. And that's why you can vary between sizes again, it's only a sixth of an inch between half sizes, third of an inch between full sizes, and you have three sixteenths between the widths. So it'll be married to one number, I guess. Correct. And again, every two to three years, I can't reiterate this enough, get resized. That way we know exactly where we're starting at. And again, we have to have that starting point. Otherwise, we're kind of just feeling around. And most people, again, have not been sized in the last you know, 10 to right. 20 years. Hang on, one other bottle here. And that, folks, is why he's the master. <laughs> this, no, this is a pair I just picked up, I thrifted, right? Um, this is the Carlisle? That is correct. What last is this? That is the 108 last. 108 last, and if we look, I think it shows up better on the sole, the, the sweep, it has almost a straight line is what I've noticed, right? That's is, correct. Uh, Cornwallis also on this last? It is not. No? Okay. No, the Cornwallis Corn is, has the same problem though. Cornwallis was on the zero last, if I remember right off the top of my head. Zero last? What is which? That, 
I can't remember. The full logo, but I can't anyway, remember. Anyway, I'll that. put it in the description. Or yeah, on it's, the it was on the zero last, if I remember right. It might have been the three last, uh, but either way, um, the that was more of a square toe where you notice. Yes, that's true. The Carlisle is awesome. more rounded. The, the Cornwallis actually had more of a sweep into that's the true. toe up to here. Uh, if you look at a current model like the Liverpool or St. John's, you'll notice that the sweep is much higher or much much more dramatic into a, into more of a squared off toe. And what will end up happening is those shoes like this, if you go up a half size, you notice it's a little snug, go up a half size. Half, going up a half size is, in my opinion, better than going up in a width because again, the heel becomes wider in the back, so you have more issues there. So if you are, let's say, a, an 11 and a half triple E mm -hmm. in a Park Avenue, and then you want to go into a St. John's, start with a 12 triple E and see how that feels. Right. And it may just not work. Correct. That's why I said don't out marry yourself yeah. to a shoe, because if you do, you will go down a rabbit hole that may never bleed you back. Right, right. And it just kind of tie that thought together, 11 and a half triple E on the 97. I wear it, um, my outside pinky toe on the right foot does touch a little bit, it's not mm -hmm. bad. It's not bad enough to get rid of the shoe, but if I were to start over, I'd do 12, well, 12 double E. And here's also something else. A storm welt on a shoe will give you two millimeters more width than a regular welt. So by going to a storm welt, if you go to, for instance, currently a strand moth versus a strand, two millimeters, not a lot, but some people prefer the strand mock because of the storm well and that gives them that extra two millimeters really? of width. The interior so, is wider? Yeah, the, because wow. now we moved the welt from the inside to the out. And so the other thing is the storm welts are also, because it's on the outside, it's a little more flexible. Interesting. Wow. Okay. Wow. One other thing we're going to talk about you're going to show here, right? So this is my foot here on uh, the, the near. Mm -hmm. And you said you are what size? I'm 11 and a half triple E as well. Okay but I can go all the way up to a 13 uh, D as well, depending on the last, depending on the fit, and sometimes 12 triple E. You look like you have a very fleshy foot that I'm making, yes. right? So you said you have a low arch though, right? Yeah, I have and no I, arch at all. And I, I hope, it in. okay. Wow, look at that, there's nothing there. There's nothing. I I'll be darned, versus, versus me, right? You can see you get my finger all the way down in there. Correct. In here, I actually wow. put my foot right here. You'll see how much more boxy my foot is. It is very so much so. A shoe like the Carlisle we just had in our hands, mm -hmm. you'll notice I would have to go up to a 12 triple E for mm -hmm. the simple fact that my foot is boxy all the way through. I don't have it is, it's like comes all the way out. It's almost like, yep, yeah. So it's a very boxy uh, foot, and yes, I uh, still have my little toe uh, with a low instep as yep. well. So I'm not a high volume foot versus mine with a high, I don't have a high in step. Nope, but you have a, a, more you have standard. a higher volume. Okay. Very interesting, very interesting. Okay. All right, so real quickly, we want to do a 10 point test whenever you're trying on shoes. And number one, you want the length fit. So that's where we're actually going from, you know, heel to the toe on the brand device, so heel to toe. Then we want the tip of the little toe. Now, why does the tip of the little toe make a difference? Remember I talked about Taylor's bunion? That, just like you were talking about in your McNeil, that will play into how much we're pressing on the outside of a shoe. Then we want the heel to inner ball, which is the arch length. That's, okay. that's where we have this portion right here. That's number three on there. Heel to the outer ball. So that's where if we're supinating or pronating, that does play into a factor again, Taylor's bunion. The ball or the width of the foot, the meaty part of the foot. Why does that make a That's difference? This, this Correct. Time. Why does that make a difference? As you just saw with our two different feet, that can play into the factor of what size, what width, and how a shoe naturally, you know, again, where our toes are. Uh, we saw where one of our, where one person's toes were longer, one person's toes are a little shorter. That does play in. So the length of the toes can, play into a factor of how the shoe actually will fit as well. The throat or throat line, we did talk about that around the back portion, how much heel slip is normal. Uh, if there's any, you don't want it too tight. Uh, the reason behind that is because if you do have it, you'll end up with pressure points and possibly blisters or calluses uh, from being too tight in the heel. So make sure that you do have a little bit of wiggle room in the heel where you can kind of, where it has a natural flex. Uh, that's the heel spring. We want to have arch fit. Uh, again, 
we don't want our and Allen Edmonds, everything is very flat to start with. Now, once it goes down, then you'll create that arch or flatness. So for me, my shoes are very flat all the way through because I don't have much of an arch. Then we have the waist to instep fit. And that's if we take the bottom of the eye stays, right here, waist to instep fit. This is that we're talking about the, the fleshiness of the foot. This is So this is what we wanna pay attention to. How, how tight is this on the foot? If it's too tight, maybe we go to a blue tree in the same size or we have to maybe go up a half size or a width, it all depends. So this there's a blue tree or a derby. Right? Mm -hmm. And then last, we have the heel fit number nine and then we have the top line fit. Again, we're going over that top line fit. So we can, so not just the throat, but the top line. So the back of the shoe. That what you're talking about. Yep. All this that's where, again, if you have an ankle that's lower or anything like that, we will, but that's, that, again, that's number 10 on the, on the 10 point test. So that's so far down the road. If everything else is fitting good, we will make something fit uh, that area and be comfortable. Awesome. All right, I think this is one of those videos that even I'm going to have to go back and watch and, and take some notes. Um, I really appreciate this. Um, I hope that that gives you guys some value and helps you get better fitting shoes. I, you know, because I personally, my 10,000 step shoes, my Allen Edmonds that fit really well and even a couple of the floor shines I have, I have no hesitation even having worn them 18,000 steps in a day. My feet feel absolutely fine. I don't see a need to buy a sneaker in that regard to be, to be more comfortable, right? Right, right. And a lot of times people automatically assume that a thicker sole is going to be more comfortable or a thinner sole. A lot of times it's a fit. So if we start with a fit, we can go from there. Some people do need to have rubber soles because their feet don't have as much meat on the bottom. And as we grow older, we will lose the meat on the bottom of our foot. So that is not uncommon. Uh, if you feel like you need to go to a rubber sole, or if you have your favorite pair of Allen Edmonds dress shoes, for instance, and you wanna get them recrafted with a rubber sole, a very common thing, we do it quite often. And if that means you start wearing them again, please feel free to stop in so we can put that rubber sole on there. Yeah, and that's why I'm a fan of, it's not just Allen Edmonds that does it, but it's any of the shoes that have the real leather uh, insole with a cork bed, and that, that footbed will form to the shape of your feet. And mm -hmm. it, it does take time though, so it takes time to break them in. Oh, it does. I found about three full days, business days, yep. uh, on a single oak sole, a double oak sole like this, I think it takes more like, I don't know, four, five, six days to yeah, really- 40 to 80 in. hours, 40 hours for a single, uh, 80 hours, or if you have like more pressure points or, and things like that, uh, definitely give it a little bit longer because that cork bed does need the heat. And remember, the longer you wear it, the heat will allow the cork bed to form. Yeah. If you only do it for two, three hours, it's not going to be enough time to allow it to form. In that case, it may take you upwards of uh, a month to get there. Wow. So that's just giving you an idea of how long. And whenever I get a new pair of Allen Edmonds, I bring two or three flexible fabric band-aids and put them in my pocket, <laughs> you know, to get through that. But I'm telling you, it's worth it. Yep. Yeah, new shoes never, never, never decide that's going to be your day that you're going to go walk 15,000 steps in a pair of oh, brand yeah, new shoes. So don't do it. Uh, it's not formed to your foot yet. And whether it even has cork bed or not, it's the same thing is that it still has to form to the heel area, to the Achilles. Otherwise, you will rub that area wrong. So in closing, I would say if you can at all get to an Allen Edmonds store and you're gonna purchase Allen Edmonds shoes, go see a fitter at an actual Allen Edmonds store. And if you're anywhere near Northeast Ohio, you are at which store? We are at Woodmere. We are at 28699 Chagrin Boulevard, Suite 250, Woodmere, Ohio, 44122. Or you can email us at woodmere at allenedmonds.com. Okay, and that's basically on the east side of Cleveland. Right. Yes, uh, over near Beechwood, right off of 271. Okay, and that's pretty much in Northeast Ohio, the only store nearby, right? Yeah, that's like Columbus. Correct, the next closest would be Columbus or Birmingham, Michigan. Okay. Awesome, thank you guys so much for watching. If you wanna see more stuff like this, hit my playlist, uh, and God bless you guys, have an amazing day. <clears throat> Hello everybody, today's video, we're gonna show you how to use the, where's the brand? Hello everybody, today's video, we're gonna show you how to use the Brannock device to proper... Okay, do it again. <laughs> do it again. Hello everybody, today's video, we're gonna show you how to use the Brannock device 
to get a proper fit. And I've got here today, Brian Pearson, who is? A store manager at Allen Edmonds, and I have fit over a thousand people during okay. my career. Ah, oh, crap, I talked over you. All right, well, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, go to my YouTube page, Robert Powers, and then click on playlists.